Hey everybody, welcome back to another Java tutorial. In this one, I'm gonna show you how to use an iterator in Java. We're gonna go over three examples. And if you're confused, they're really not that bad at all. I'm gonna show you. So first, let's go to File, New, Java Project. So we start off on a clean slate together. We'll call it something like iterators are fun. And hit finish. And then we'll go to new class on the source folder. Call it something like my class. Hit the public static void main checkbox and hit finish. An iterator is a really helpful tool that lets you loop through a collection. So an example of a collection would be like an array list or a hash map. Let's start by looping through an array list with an iterator. To make an array list in Java, you just type array list. Then in these little alligators, you want to put the type of the values in your array list. Let's make these strings. And we'll put like different foods in here. So we'll call it foods equals new array list of type string. I know this is like, this was always so ugly to me, like making collection objects, but it's what you gotta do. Under this red underline, it shows that we need to actually import that array list code. So we're just gonna click that so we get it working. Now let's start adding to this collection object so that we can use it. The array list just lets you store data a little easier. So we'll just type foods.add pizza. Um, let's say ice cream. I really want some ice cream right now. I tried getting ice cream last night at this cookie place. You can add two scoops of vanilla ice cream to a cookie, but they were out. And we'll add like bourbon chicken. Man, I am hungry today. Now let's make our iterator object. To make an iterator is a little different, but you start off by typing iterator, and then in the alligators, the type of the variable. We'll call it something short and sweet like it, which is short for iterator. And we'll say equals foods dot iterator. So this array list object, since it's a collection, you can do dot iterator. We get a red underline, which means we just need to import the iterator object. We'll import it from java.util, not the other one. We'll see what methods this iterator can do by just typing it dot. And you can see all these things that the iterator object can do to help you with your code. Um, we can like remove things from the collection. We can get elements from it with this next method. So we'll do next and we'll actually print out whatever whatever that it.next is getting. It.next. Let's save this and run it to see what happens. And it's returning pizza. It's getting the first element. So each time you do it.next, it gets the next element. We'll loop through later, um, but just as a super easy to understand example, we'll do it.next three times. And you can see that each time it gets the next element, each time it's called. To make this easier, the iterator object has a nice little method called it.hasNext. So we can do while the iterator has a next value, then we know a value exists, which means that we can print it out. Dot next. Pretty easy, pretty helpful. So now if this was like super duper long, we could just, you know, just print out however many it is in a nice little three line piece of code right here. We could do this with another collection, like maybe a hash map. So we could just make this a hash map object instead. Import that hash map and then we'll simplify it down to how it was before. And I'm sorry, not hash map. This is gonna be hash set because a hash map has two values inside of the alligators because it's a key and a value. But a hash set is a collection that we can use with the iterator. So we'll import hash set, save it, run it, and it works exactly the same. These could even be something different like an integer integer and we can say just numbers five two 
1,234. Change the iterator to type integer. And it would work the same. We can also remove elements from a collection with the iterator as well. So now let's do a third example where say we want to remove all elements that are less than 50. Let's have an array list of integers called nums. And then we'll add certain values like 49, 104, 76, and negative 40. We'll make our iterator. We'll loop through using our iterator. So while it has a next value. We'll make an integer that is equal to that value. We'll say if that value is less than 50, then we'll remove it. And we'll print out that collection at the very end. This is another benefit of collections. You can just type the name of it nums and it'll print out nicely for you. If you tried to print out something like an array doing this, it would give you some really ugly code that has to do with like the memory location of it. So that's why we make these collection objects is to just kind of simplify things and make it easier to deal with data. So if we save and run this, oops, then we get 104 and 76 because it removed all values less than 50. So I hope this helped you. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.